In Bendy and the Dark Revival, at the start of Chapter 3, we find Bendy inside an elevator eating a lost one. Soon after this, we fall into a pit of widows that starts the fight with the King Widow. But what if we completely broke this boss fight? And how do things look from a different perspective? Well, let's find out. So as we make our way down the stairs leading to the elevator, we see Bendy, who's eating a lost one, in that same elevator that we need to go into. Now normally, as you draw near, Bendy will notice you and then you have to run and hide. The elevator door shuts and Bendy disappears, but we can bypass this by going on top of the elevator and skipping the trigger that's on the stairs. And then once we're on top, we drop down below and we are inside the elevator and Bendy cannot see us or sense us. We can walk through his body and we can bash him over the head with a pipe and he does not care. So the elevator panel also does not work because we skipped the trigger for the elevator. So we're actually going to step off and trigger Bendy seeing us. And then when Bendy disappears and we hide, we're then going to load Bendy back in. So even though Bendy escaped, we brought him back to the map. And this time his trigger is missing. So now we can actually go inside and use the elevator. Now I have to say, taking a ride in the elevator with Bendy right here. <laughs> Eating a body is kind of weird, but as the sequence progresses, I was really curious if Bendy was going to fall with me. And as it turns out, only Audrey falls and Bendy stays up top, so we enter the boss room alone. However, rewinding time slightly, I want to show you what that fall looks like from a different perspective. And as you can see, it's a long ways down. So a quick recap for this boss room. Basically, you land down here, there's a spider on your gent pipe, you fling it off, and then you must go around the room while defeating all the mini spiders, and you must hammer in all these switches that take multiple hits. Now, once that is complete and all the switches are activated, then all the little spiders retreat, and the giant king widow emerges from the ground. Now, the little ankle biter spiders are very, very annoying, but not as terrifying as the big boy, because the big lad will actually eat Audrey if she dies in combat with it. So if the little spiders kill you, you respawn in the ink, but if the big spider kills you, well, it's game over, and you must start the whole thing over. But what's kind of interesting is that during this entire first phase of the fight, the big spider is actually frozen in the sewer below you. And as soon as you hit that final switch, that king spider unloads. Which is a bit strange because it was put down here beforehand, and I'm not entirely sure why it disappears before it comes out of the sewer. But we can see the little spiders scurrying away in slow motion, and it kind of looks cool. And then the big spider then spawns and climbs out from down below. Now, if we slow down everything, what's interesting is that the boss spider's animations actually are not fluid. Everything in the background from our character to the mini spiders are fluid, but the boss spider's animation almost seems like it's keyframed with rigid keyframes. Basically keyframes that are held in place and cannot auto interpolate depending on the length of the actual animation. So when we slow down the game, the animation becomes longer, so it needs more data in between those points, but the boss spider does not respond to that, and so you get this really jittery, strange effect that takes place. But I bet you're all wondering, because I sure am, how does this boss spider fit Audrey in its mouth? Well, if we slow down the game and we alter the perspective, we can take a look. And what's interesting, as you can see, Audrey basically goes straight in and straight out the other side. The spider's torso is merely used as a pass-through point, and Audrey is lowered into the floor beneath the spider slowly as the animation plays. And this totally makes sense because from the player's perspective, they would never see anything beyond the rim of the spider's mouth. So Audrey basically phases through the spider and into the floor, and then the game over screen pops up. Now this boss fight is very, very aggressive, but let's make it non-aggressive. So the way the enemies work is they have to be in contact with Audrey's collider in order to initiate an attack. So we could either disable Audrey's collider or just change the size of her. And by changing the size of her, well, her collider scales down with her. And so the spiders come up to her and because the colliders are not touching, well, the spiders are programmed to not attack unless that happens. So they run up to you and they wait. And while all this is actually going on, we can take off the sewer lid and fall down to the king spider. Now the little spiders will not follow us down here, but they will float up above us. However, touching the king spider at all will cause us to take damage. And by doing so, it will actually move our player upwards to the top of the sewer. It's like this pulling effect every time we take damage. However, even though we're taking damage, we cannot damage the boss before they're active. But going back to what I was talking about earlier, if we're small, that also means the boss, when it's active, cannot initiate an attack on us. So we can just run around and the boss will follow us like it's a pet or something. Now, as the boss fight progresses, there is a phase in the fight where the boss will jump on the ceiling and spit little spiders out. 
And I was really curious. I was thinking, well, can the boss take damage when it's on the ceiling? So if we move the boss downward, we can see that the boss is invincible when they're in this pose. Swinging our weapon at the boss, even though we're making contact, does not deal any damage. So no, we cannot defeat the boss early in this phase. However, the manhole cover is gone, so when the boss jumps back down, it actually falls down that pit. And the spider is not capable of getting outside this pit. The only way to beat the boss at this point is not to jump into the pit and whack it a few times with our pipe. And the boss is defeated in a very unconventional spot. But real quick, we're turning back time one final time to see what happens if we get to this room early without triggering the boss at all. If we make our way down here before triggering the elevator fall, we'll find ourselves in the boss room and the little spiders do come after us, but the switches on the walls do not work. And there's also no boss music. So basically, we are stuck here. But that brings us to the end of our boss adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe because I have a lot more breaking to do and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.